Well, welcome back. Today we're going to go over something fairly simple. See, we have these little uh, modules that I believe Big Clive basically figured out were not your normal average module. They were actually stun gun modules. And as brave as he is, braver than me, he actually took one and ran into Brust himself. Now usually when you run these modules open, you cause a problem. You burn out the circuit inside of them. You'll easily burn out the transformer. And unfortunately for me, this one I've had for a while, it's been working good. I decided to go up with one that was a little higher. It says it's made by LG. So okay, well let's try this. And upon firing it open, it lasted maybe one or two times and that was it. Now it does nothing but whine at me. And it just it just whines. I run it in its proper voltage. I give it plenty of currents from a, a, a LiPo battery or a power supply. It doesn't matter. It just sits there and whines. It's such a whiner. Well, anyway, point being, when messing with high voltage of any kind, first off, there's a few things you have to keep in mind. There's, 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 there's this level of EMF, this static discharge of s the smell that you'll... you'll have come across your, your nose of ozone burning through the air and anything on you or around you may be affected so take it off medical devices insulin pumps pacemakers I highly recommend against doing any kind of high voltage experimentation and high voltage if you have these devices on you now I do have an insulin pump but I can take it off every once in a while. The reason I keep the box around, something from my shelf up top decides to try to follow me. Ah yes, 3 to 6 volts. This was supposed to be 400,000 volts. What a laugh. Uh, I highly doubt it. The 400,000 volt part, that is. But we might be able to rig something up here and just power it from my power supply. And let's see if it crackles or whines as it was before. Yep, I heard a little bit of whining out of it. That's all I got. You damage these very easily, especially if they're meant for a higher voltage. If they're designed for, in this case, 400,000 volts, supposedly. I don't know how much truth there is to that. I never got around to measuring it because it died before I had a chance to measure it. So now this one's completely dead. Now this one, I think originally was rated for 20,000 volts. And this one I've been able to open fire for quite a quite some time now, for over a year, on and off. It lets me separate it a little further if I want to. You do have that smelling ozone in the air. You can see my power supply was definitely putting out three amps, it's tired. It, well, actually that was two amps. If I put this to three, I need to see what this would do at three. But let's give it one run real quick. In fact, let's bring the lights down. Don't recommend this at all. If these are stun gun transformers, then they will allow it to be fired dry because if, if a stun gun fails just from being fired dry, then that's not the point of a stun gun. This one, which I think I have measured at 25,000 volts. Don't try to measure this with a standard multimeter. Do this very carefully if you ever do. Have the proper equipment like this high voltage flute probe, stuff like this know what you're doing take all pro proper safety precautions but I have measured this and what I was doing is after Big Clyde decided to shock himself is I wanted to measure this one and it never made it that far to measuring it but in the process of me sending an email to him and saying hey do you mind if I take a piece of your video and just kind of throw a piece of your video in into a video I want to do about this you know what happened Well, 9.95 is our highest. Let's go 3 amps. Uh, no, let's step it up. Let's do 2 amps. 6 volts. And there's our 15 kilovolts, which is about what I saw from this battery, which is what I suspected that this did about 2.5 amps at 4 volts, which would be about 2 amps at 6 volts. Maybe this did about 3 amps at 4 volts. Wattage being about the same. Definitely got that ozone smell. Yes, we're ozone layering it now. If I just take it to, 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 let's just run it one time. 
one time shot, 3.2 amps. Uh, and, 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 and see, see what 3.2 amps does at 6 volts. Whoop, there's an arc. Not. I believe I just burned my mat. I did. It 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 arced through my mat. It actually ran an arc uh, underneath my mat. Did not expect that. Yeah, 18 kilovolts. Uh, I think this is above uh, a stun gun. Big Clive must have been hurting. Really. I mean, really hurting. Did we damage my, 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 uh... My high voltage probe. Well, we, we gotta go back to our test again. Let's find out if we, 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 if we, we damaged our high voltage probe here. Make sure we're not arcing. And we're not. We'll reset our min max. Two point two nine. So still accurate. We have a hole in my insulation. It's supposed to be non-conductive. I'm going to. Yep, it burned a hole through the insulation. This is supposed to be non-conductive here. Let's see. If I drag this anywhere across here, this should be non-conductive. This whole entire mat should be chemical resistant, heat resistant, non-conductive. But this mat's no good anymore because 25 kilovolts managed to arc its way underneath. Underneath the bench, on, under the black, the black side of these mats, the bottom side are conductive. The top side are non-conductive. And these mats are installed for your safety. Continuity won't pick it up because it's it's too too high of a resistance. So you have to use an ohmmeter. You can hear the relay clicking on it. You're gonna have to replace the mat at some point. And, and well, by doing this, I, I definitely hit that point of time to replace the mat. Uh, fortunately, this particular mat that I bought was on the cheaper side from the first mat that I showed when I first built my lab. It seems to have this issue where it's been curling up on me on the edges. So we're going back to the original color and we're going back to the more expensive mat. This mat that I bought when I built the new new lab, when I built the new benches out, this mat was $100 for 10 feet, which is a really good price. And now I know why it was a really good price. You can't put a price on safety for one, for two. It was too cheap. It really was too cheap. The problem is, is this mat has flooded the market on Amazon known as Beachnum or Beachum or something like that. So you're gonna see this mat out and I'm gonna recommend against it. Not not just because it can't handle 20,000 volts. I'll say this real clear to the microphone. Trust me, I understand the 20,000 volts was my fault for not properly insulating. The reason I burnt the mat was my fault. I'm not saying the mat is not good because it couldn't handle resisting 20,000 volts on the top non-conductive layer. What I'm saying is the mat curls up the mat has burned easier than my last mat with temperature and soldering and hot soldering. It has left chemical like stains to it than, than, than the previous mat. And to top it off, it doesn't look as good on camera as the darker blue mat did anyway. Let's go ahead and replace this mat. Back to the same quality mat that I originally ordered from SRA Solder when I built my first lab and stopped trying to find cheaper solutions. Now you'll, you'll notice I never really did recommend this mat when I built the new lab. What I did do is decided I want to use it for a year. And then if I like it, if it still works, I'm going to recommend it to you. If it fails me, I'm going to do a video like I'm doing right now and telling you, do not cheap out on these, th this type of mat. Do not cheap out on, on things that are there to protect you. Do not cheap out on things that will not resist chemicals that will easily melt through to the conductive layer of the mat with just a little drip of solder. Don't cheap out on certain things in the lab. Yes, I do try to find things that are affordable for this hobby. Yes, I do try to review things and market things or, or recommend things to, to people that are more affordable or are on the more affordable line for people that are in the hobby. But I also try to make sure they are still functional despite the fact of being cheaper. Just because just things are cheaper does not mean it's still it's a bad option. 
it can still be a usable cheap or an item not in this case this is one of those cases where going backwards was not a good idea well here you get to see a little bit of a uh, lights camera in action here's the top GoPro that you see the top angles from and here you can see where it's been curling up here. In fact, this you can see it's been curling up and it's doing it not to just this bench, it's doing it to both my benches. So eventually I'm gonna to have to replace the one on my soldering iron bench as well. So here we are back to the original. MT2460 Royal Blue Transforming Technologies also can be purchased from SRA Solder or can be purchased from Transforming Technologies which is also a distributor on Amazon. The one thing I do like about this one and unlike many of the other mats is they make this a 5 foot by 2 foot which is perfect if you're just using a standard 5 foot table bench like I am. So no more light blue Back to the dark blue navy mat, which I think actually personally looked better on video anyway. The mat that I bought did not come with the connection hardware, where this one, I believe, comes with the connection hardware, including the snaps, which I had to install my own snaps on the last one. And comes with the additional hardware as well, which I already own. But hey, it's always good to have extras. Batteries, batteries, the battery itself is a good solution because it's heavy, it's flat. Let's adjust this up a little bit. I'll have to play with the cameras again and get them back on angle. Well, that's not good. Oh, now because the new colors, definitely a different contrast has appeared. I miss the old blue back. I like having the old blue back. What do you guys think? Old blue? Better deal? Hmm. Well, leave your opinion down below. For some of the people that have been watching me for a longer time, they'll recognize the order or this blue mat as being the original color of when I first started my channel. And the first mat I ever purchased. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, there we go. The Caution ESD. There you go. Now there's a full full breakout of contrast of different colors and everything. Pretty much all I want to share with you today is the fact that these masks do not last forever. Yes, you will have to replace them eventually. Yes, they sometimes will be damaged by you and the experiments that you are working on and the stuff that you are doing. And when that happens, you should not trust them. You should not keep them. You should not say, oh, well, it's only this one part that took high voltage and shot through the conductive side. Everything else should be okay. No, not unless you want to risk your life. Everything should not be okay because the next time something follows that path and jumps out the other side of that conductive part, it may be shooting out at you. Or it may be going through the bottom of the mat here, which is up against my chest right now at the edge of the table, which may be the least path of using the underside of that conductive part of the mat to shoot straight to my heart, in this case, because the table sits about as high as where my heart is in my chest. So that would be a death shot. If, if you burn through your mat like that, just, just know you made a mistake. You didn't have proper insulation. You didn't have enough proper plastic insulating it and what have you. And it, you know what happens. Just replace the mat. It's not worth your life. I'm sure your life is worth more than $100. Go buy a new section of mat and replace it. Call it a hard lesson. But you know, sometimes in every hobby and even every profession, there are hard lessons to be learned. And thanks for watching. Remember, keep it safe. Any questions, comments, leave down below. Any questions, any cri constructive criticism, anything like that, yeah, feel free to leave down below. And I'll answer them. If not, give you at least a thumbs up. Make sure that I acknowledge them. I read every comment. Be safe. Keep on tinkering and I'll see you in the next video. I can't believe I can't find the remote now to turn it.